Hello crew, I'm going to do a calculation in this video where I determine the altitude of Earth's geosynchronous orbit. Sometimes that same thing is called a geostationary orbit, though I really kind of prefer the geosynchronous idea because stationary implies that the thing isn't moving at all, which I think is a little bit of a misnomer. Let's just start by making sure you understand what this thing is. So here's the Earth, Earth. And let's say that this is the North Pole that's sitting right there. So I'm really taking a top-down view of the Earth. That means right on the edge over here, right on the border, this is the equator that's going around here. And we know that the Earth is rotating about its own axis here, right on that North Pole, where the period is equal to 24 hours. What's interesting and clever is that people also know that you can plop some satellites down out here, put them in orbit, so that they're going around the Earth and they will have their own orbital periods. There's a certain orbital radius, R O R B for orbit, in which the orbital period of the satellite can actually be equal to the rotational period of the Earth. This is very special because there are locations that you could just sit on the Earth and look up and no matter what, you would see a particular satellite in a particular what would appear to be fixed location in the sky. Now don't forget that the Earth is actually rotating about its own axis. That's our days. But as it rotates around, this satellite would move with it and it would keep pace and just be perfect so that it always appears to be at the same location in the sky. It's an important note that this really will only work if you're sitting right above the equator. So it's a pretty special spot in space above us where if you have the right altitude and you're right above the equator, then you can have this geosynchronous orbit, so sinking of the periods here. Let's do some calculations to determine not only this orbital radius that's sitting here, but specifically I want to know the altitude. The altitude is going to be from the surface of the Earth out to the particular satellite. To do this calculation, ultimately I'm just going to plug some numbers into this equation up here. I thought it would actually be worthwhile to show how we get that equation, starting from the more fundamental ideas of circular motion and centripetal accelerations and so forth. So we're going to do that in this particular video. To begin, I think I'm going to start you on this idea that Newton tells us that any time you have a net force, you must accelerate. If that force, that net force is centripetal, meaning inward pointing, then the acceleration will also be centripetal, also meaning inward pointing. So we have a circle for our motion. That's going to ultimately be the orbital path for our satellite. But for a particular velocity that's pointing out in this direction, there is a perpendicular acceleration that points to the center here of that circle where that is a right angle between those two vectors. Because this acceleration is always inward pointing, we call it a centripetal acceleration, and we write the magnitude of the centripetal acceleration as v squared over r. Well, if I take that centripetal acceleration and I just plug it into here, we can see that it's pretty easy for me to say the centripetal force is equal to the mass of the object times v squared divided by r. Then what we can do from there is we can take this expression, which is really a pretty straightforward idea that the, the speed of an object that's going around in a circle, so call that this v that's over here, is just going to be the distance divided by the time. So the distance is 2 pi r, that's the circumference of a circle, divided by a very particular and special time. It is the period. So by definition, the period is the amount of time to go around a circle once. So take this v that's right here and plug it in to that v. And you find an expression that looks like this. The centripetal force is mass times 2 pi r over t. All of that quantity is getting squared divided by r. We distribute this square in onto every single one of the terms here. Notice that there are two r's up here in the numerator. So sorry this is getting so messy, but there are two r's that are going to be right there. There's one r that's down here. So this denominator r is going to cancel one of those. And then you are left with this equation where fc is equal to m times 4 
pi squared r divided by t squared. So while that looks like a big nasty equation, really all it is saying is it talks about the centripetal force required to keep an object that's moving in circular motion continuously accelerating towards the center of the circle. So that's the direction changer. If you look at the things that can change in here, you've got a mass, we're going to hold that constant, that's going to ultimately be a satellite or something like that for us. Here's the radius of the orbit for this application, and here's the period of rotation. So what we've done is we've gotten rid of the speed of the satellite, and we've now written it in terms of the period of rotation. That's going to be our 24 hours as long as we're in the right units. I had this equation that said that 4 pi squared r, there was a mass in front, uh, t squared, was equal to the centripetal force. So from here we recognize that there is some sort of centripetal force required in order to accelerate. Again, in our case, it's a satellite around the Earth. And that force comes from gravity. So up here I have the equation for universal gravity, where I have mass one and mass two, so that'd be the mass of the Earth and then the mass of the satellite, the gravitational constant, which I've written down here, and d is the distance of separation which for us is going to be the orbital radius. So if I have a satellite that's orbiting out here in this particular orbital radius, and here's Earth sitting in here, this r, r, o, r, b for orbital radius, that is the distance of separation between the satellite and the planet. So what's really cool is that you can say, aha, this centripetal force really is just the force due to gravity, which is equal to g, how about big M for the mass of the planet, small m for the mass of the satellite, divided by, and instead of a d squared, I'm going to use an r for the orbital radius, but it's still being squared. But that is actually the same type of r that's sitting over here. So I'm going to just get rid of this intermediate here so it cleans up a little bit. And now we're going to group a bunch of like terms. I'm going to cross multiply, send this r up there, and I'm going to send the t squared up into the numerator there. And I find that m4 pi squared r cubed is equal to g capital M, mass of the planet, small m, period, squared. Lo and behold, the mass of the small little satellite in this problem is going to cancel out. It's not even necessary to know the mass of the satellite in order to pop it up in a geosynchronous orbit. And if you divide both sides by G capital M, G capital M, we get rid of that material there and you are left with T squared is equal to all this junk here. And now we are sitting at that equation. So like I said, I thought it would at least be worthwhile to kind of fly through the derivation of getting to this period equation that involves universal gravity. So it doesn't seem like it's just being yanked out of the air. But really, in order to solve our particular problem, all we need to do is plug our numbers into that equation. So rearranging this, I'm going to find that r cubed is equal to g m t squared over 4 pi squared. That's the equation I'm going to use. Now my biggest problem is I got to make sure I have unit agreement. t is correctly identified as being 24 hours. That's the period I want the satellite to have so that it actually tracks over the earth. I would not have unit agreement right now if I just ran with that. So I need 24 hours multiplied by 3,600 seconds per hour so that I can find my orbital period. T is equal to 86,400 seconds. Then if you haven't noticed it, I gave us the mass of Earth. I just looked that up in a textbook. And I also have the radius of Earth sitting here. Now that's interesting though because I got to be really careful. I don't want to plug the radius of Earth into this equation right now. I'm actually trying to s solve for the orbital radius. And it can be a little confusing because you're using these r's all over the place. So I want to know the orbital radius, whereas this little distance out here, that is actually the radius of Earth. And I will come back and use that later so that I can truly find the altitude. But r orbit, that is actually my variable right now. 
So writing this out, I'm going to have r cubed is going to be equal to 6.67 e minus 11 newtons meters squared per kilogram squared. Now I will put in the mass of Earth is 5.97 e24, that's kg, times 86,400 seconds. All of this is being divided by 4 pi squared. Oops, and I forgot my square up there on the period. The reason why I wanted to write it out like this and show all my units is I want you to see what sort of unit agreement we have here. So don't forget that inside of the Newton is a kilogram times meter divided by second squared. That's what a Newton is. So I have second squared in the denominator there from the Newton. That's going to cancel the second that's being squared because of that thing. So seconds have gone away. This meter is going to combine with that meter squared that's sitting there. So I have meters cubed. I have one kilogram that was in the Newtons, getting rid of one of the kilograms that's in the denominator there. The other kilogram is over here, so it cancels that out. So I actually have meters cubed right now which is good because if you come over here and look I have r cubed. So I'll just show this intermediate step real quick. r cubed is equal to, it's going to be a huge quantity, is 7.53 times 10 to the 22. That's actually in meters cubed right now. Don't forget to cube this entire quantity. I can do that by raising it to the one-third power and I find that r, and remember this is my orbital r here, is equal to 4.22 times 10 to the 7 meters. We're almost all the way there, but we are not quite home yet. People don't tend to like to think about where a satellite should be placed relative to the center of the Earth, which is what this R orbit is talking about here. So what you actually have in reality is you have this Earth that's sitting there, and here's the radius of the Earth, R Earth. Then above this, you have some sort of altitude. That's what people like to talk about. And here's my satellite. It would be hanging out up here somewhere. And what we just calculated was a very different quantity. We just calculated the radial distance for the orbit. So this is our orbit. And if you follow what I'm saying here, is you could write a quick expression that says our orbit is equal to the radius of the Earth plus the altitude. So basically I just need to subtract that quantity off of that bigger number. And I find that the altitude is equal to 3.58 times 10 to the 7 meters. And that is my final answer. So if you want to launch something up into space that's going to have an orbital period that's identical to the orbital rotation of the Earth, the 24-hour day. So pop it up over the equator, and it needs to be at an altitude of 3.58 times 10 to the 7 meters in order for it to be in the right spot. It's some pretty valuable real estate up there. I don't know how many satellites are in a geosynchronous orbit, but I bet you it would be something on the order of a thousand. Probably a number you could look up pretty clearly though. Though I bet some of those satellites that are up there are super top secret and we probably can't have access to those things. Um, but there's probably a lot up there for GPS and stuff like that. You can see if I didn't go through the derivation of the equation, it would actually be a pretty quick process to find that particular altitude. But hopefully everything made sense, and if it did, you should let your computer know.